Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. Wyomingites are now facing tough job markets, and many may turn to the state's community colleges or the University of Wyoming to refine skills or seek new career opportunities as job options are changing. For longtime workers, it maybe has been a while since the routine of reading, studying, taking notes, and taking tests has been the focus of their day. In a word, a return to the classroom for older students can be scary. We'll visit with a non-traditional student who made the difficult decision to go back to school but is now flourishing at Gillette College. And we'll catch up with the work of Complete College Wyoming. We want to understand how Wyoming's economic struggles are impacting the drive to not only get students in the classroom, but to help them succeed and complete their degree-seeking goals. It's all next on Wyoming Chronicle. Gaylene Spence joins us now to talk more about Complete College Wyoming. But Gaylene, you're a non-traditional student. Um, you're, you've just completed one of the two degrees that you're seeking at Gillette College. Tell us about your academic history. Um, I uh, went to a private school in New Jersey all the way up through 11th grade. And then uh, I finished high school in a public school. And then I uh, just started my family after that. So I uh, didn't actually start college until just a year and a half ago. So you came to Wyoming when you were about 20 years old? When I was about 20, yes. Mm -hmm. And how difficult of a decision, and, and why is it that you wanted to come back to college? Well, my kids were grown, and I'd always wanted to go to college and, you know, get a, get a degree, and none of my family ever has. I'm first generation. So, uh, and I also thought that it might help encourage my own kids to maybe attend college also. How tough was it for you? to um, make, having made that decision to now step into class? It was pretty scary at first because um, high school was so long ago. I wasn't sure I was going to remember enough of the academics to be able to um, maintain a decent uh, grade or success in college when I first started. And um, so you, you made the decision, you're not getting one degree, you're getting two. What, right. what is it that you hope to do? Eventually, I would like to get into school administration, preferably academic advising. Okay, so what are your, your one degree is in education? Secondary education. And what's your other degree in? Will be business. And I understand you're a 21st century scholar. I am. Yes. Tell me about that. Was that an application process that you competed for that scholarship? Well, you, you, it's part of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, and they have a scholarship program that you, you fill out. It's like 12 pages of questions and essays and stuff and then that goes in front of a bunch of judges I'm not sure where sure. and then uh, two people from every community college is chosen for the Wyoming academic team and then one person from all the Wyoming academic teams from all the colleges one person is chosen from them to be the Century Scholar to rec uh, represent the state. Well, certainly, congratulations about that. Thank you. Where do you see your academic studies taking you now? Um, I'm looking at either University of Wyoming or Shadron State to get a bachelor's degree in social work as the next step towards hopefully being an academic advisor someday. So if you were to um, challenge or maybe give advice to someone who might be watching that um, might be like you, it's been in the back of their minds that they thought that it would be a good thing to get a college deg degree, but they really didn't know what to do. What would you tell them? Just go in and just start asking questions. You know, the, they're, there, they're there to help you. They're there to help you succeed. You know, that's their job. Gaylene Spence, it's been a pleasure to visit with you and best wishes. Thank you. 
As we begin to visit for the third time now in part three of our Complete College Wyoming series, um, we have another panel assembled, and Dr. Jackie Fries, this is the third time you've been with us. Thank you so much for joining us. You're Vice President for Student Success at Western Wyoming College, and you're also the Director of Complete College Wyoming. Right, thank so you. Welcome, and thank you very much for visiting with us. Judy Hay is the Vice President for Student Affairs at Laramie County Community College. Welcome, Judy. Thank you. And Dave Traverso. Um, welcome, Dave. This is Systems Manager for Cloud Peak Energy. Um, Judy, this is uh, um, the, or excuse me, Jackie, this is the third time that we've um, um, gathered to visit about Correct. Complete College Wyoming. Let's go back just a little bit and kind of briefly tell us um, why, why we're here and where we're going with Complete College Wyoming. Right. You know, it's really interesting to me that we're so far along at this point because several years ago when the governor determined that Wyoming should join Complete College America. I'm not sure any of us knew what the form would really be for our group because we didn't want to just pick up a national perspective and move forward. And we've talked about that before. We really wanted it to be Wyoming specific and it, we wanted it to address those issues that were important to us. And I think we've stayed true to that. This last year we really focused on the things that are important to helping Wyoming students move forward in higher education that helps foster those partnerships with the K-12 community and really allows us to assess some of what we're doing and we did our first dashboard this last year created some data that really shows that the goals that we have are making progress do we have a ways to go absolutely but we're excited about where we've been and excited about where we're going we've set some new goals for this coming year and I think those goals will help to move Wyoming education even further ahead let's talk about that um, just briefly as relative to the successes that you've seen um, to our community colleges to the University of Wyoming all community colleges encompassing right so you know I think one example for example the uh, graduation numbers have gone up 9.3 percent for the community colleges in the three years that we've been involved in in tracking that information that was a goal that was five percent a year is what we wanted to accomplish and unfortunately we set the goal the year that enrollment started going down and so in order to achieve increases in graduation, we really had to do more to facilitate the process for students so they could complete. So that's a real success, I think. And Complete College Wyoming doesn't do the initiatives. What we do is support this institutions and facilitate the dialogue. So we bring people together, we talk about issues, we share best practices, and then we move forward with the institutions actually doing the initiatives to change our environment. And each institution has done this differently, Judy. And mm -hmm. LCCC has its own take on the importance of participating in the Complete College Wyoming movement. Give us your perspective um, on what, what's happening at LCCC and whether it's made a difference. Well, thank you. Um, we have had an awful lot of activity and, and a lot of it is wrapped up in the Complete College Wyoming project as well as some other national projects around the, the country. What we have chosen to do at LCCC is work on some of the um, support services first and the curriculum next and so in the last three to just about four years now we have accomplished implementation of a totally new advising system called holistic advising or intrusive advising uh, and it's a case management model and that's that's a, a best practice throughout the, the community college industry and we have implemented other things such as mandatory orientation for all new students. We do uh, no late registration for classes and we have a mandatory student success course in your first semester. So we have some things in place that are best practices and leave fewer options for students to slip off our radar. And prior to that it was much more of a um, kind of a, a cafeteria style as they say of, of curriculum and of services and that uh, what, what one of the famous people in our industry says students don't do optional and, and so don't. they don't do things <laughs> that you just lay out there for them so we've made it hard to escape the support that we give and then the other pieces that had to come into place as well are um, issues of, of redesigning developmental education and I don't think there's a community college in the country that has not looked at their developmental math and English courses and to see how they can shorten the trip through developmental ed as well as how our placement practices work with that and so we've we've redone our placement practices and we've also discussed before it's not only just getting the student in that developmental class it's making them feel that it's worth it and yes. that they're not being penalized but supported yes mm -hmm. yes and then our faculty uh, redid they they did a redesign of all of our curriculum they re-examined every program we have 
and, uh, and made sure that all of them were 60 to 64 credits and that they connect, if they're a transfer program, they connect with a university four-year program so that they have an articulation agreement in place. And Dave, before I, before I come to you, Judy, I want to ask you one more thing about faculty. We talk yeah. so much in the Complete College Wyoming movement about students and student success and our students graduating. But certainly faculty is impacted too as practices change. Has that been your experience? It absolutely has. There's a, there's a renewed focus on student success and you cannot leave faculty out of that equation, certainly. So the faculty have done an awful lot of work in this. When we talk about redesigning the curriculum, that is a huge, huge um, job that takes many, many man hours. And then articulation agreements as well. That takes talking faculty to faculty at whatever university. And so a lot of ours are with the University of Wyoming. Faculty at each community college have to talk with the faculty at the university. They have to agree on what the curriculum should be and is, and then how those courses will transfer. So it takes a lot of give and take, an awful lot of checking egos at the door, and then sitting down and really talking about students and their, their disciplines. So um, we can't do any of this work without the faculty being on board. And, uh, and so that's a, that's a fairly new um, adventure for our faculty. And across the state, it's been very much one of, of people just shouldering together and doing that work. Dave, let's turn to you. Your perspective of this is totally different, I would assume, than um, um, Jackie and Judy's, although really it's the same. I mean, you're interested in, in looking at people coming into the workforce, whether it be at Cloud Peak Energy or anywhere else, that are, that are maybe completed degrees and how important that is. Tell me your role in Complete College Wyoming. Um, I've been on the um, board for about a year now. I've been uh, in several of the meetings. It's just really, I mean, Cloud Peak is a big believer in the community colleges. Uh, we work with uh, Gillette College and Sheridan College the last, probably last decade in trying to get technical roles at the mine sites over the last decade with the oil and the gas in the boom state it was very difficult to attract technical talent. So we went out and worked with the colleges, developed a program where they can go to school weekends and summers and come out to work at the mine site. We'll pay them while they're out there. Um, good tool benefits, uh, graduation. And upon graduation, we found jobs for those individual folks. Um, there's probably been about 50 or 60 that we've hired full time. Um, a lot of them asked me, can I just get the certificate? Uh, so we really, so we hired just strictly associate's degrees, you know, push those kids to l learn to, to write, to read, and to communicate. Uh, it's been very critical for us. I'm sure there are some maybe juniors, seniors, their parents that are watching this today and are wondering, in Wyoming, is preparing my, my son or my daughter for the energy industry still a good thing? Do you have perspective about that? I think um, everybody in the bottom of a down market office gets down on the whole thing, but um, we bounced back before. Do I think it's going to be a market like it was, you know, five, six years ago? Probably not. Um, it's one of those ones that's going to be steady. It's going to be, uh, they're good paying jobs, but I don't think they'll be jobs like they were 10, 15 years ago. I mean, that's just the reality of the, the world we live in right now. But uh, one thing you get with a degree is you get mobility. Um, folks who we found without degrees, without that experience, tend to be stuck in their jobs. So it's critical when we talk to students, I mean, get your degree, get that perseverance, get that, finish that degree, and you'll have the mobility so when the industries do turn, you'll be able to find a job. So what I think I hear you saying is that degree may be important not only in getting the job, but then what happens when, when we have, have a downturn, it's even more valuable from your perspective. Absolutely. And those folks that have the experience and have the degrees, will be able to find jobs. They may not be in Wyoming, they may be in someplace else, but. I want to talk, I think we need to talk um, about the economic downturn. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, we all have read the news and, and, and listened to the news and understand how um, much not only the University of Wyoming, but certainly the community colleges have been impacted as well. Um, what, what is the future here? And, and anecdotally, you hear that more students now theoretically will come to a community college in an economic downturn. First, is that what you're seeing? And um, how certain are we that we can um, survive with strong community college programs, Jackie? So certainly I think we're all seeing at least stable enrollment, even during a time when some people are moving outside of our areas. But it becomes even more important for us to train 
people for new jobs or mm -hmm. help to train people for those jobs where they're going to be much more competitive. I was hearing a story the other day in one of our Trona mines where they advertised for one position and had 1,700 applicants. Uh, so that tells you that the more education people have and the better prepared they are, the more likely they are to get that job. And that's a key role for the community colleges in this state. Throughout the state, we provide that opportunity for on-the-job training, for um, active learning, if you will, in, in the technical programs, but also in our transfer programs. And for those students who want to move on to the transfer programs, they become even more important in tomorrow's economy. Judy, you see students that come to LCCC is there more um, uncertainty now as far as future? How does uh, LCCC accommodate those students and, and what's, what's, what's the vision in this economic downturn for LCCC? Well, you know, I think community colleges are, are best set up if, if they're really intentional about everything they do. They understand their mission and they execute that mission well. And so when students come to us, no matter whether the economy is good or bad, we want to be a strong partner for that student and help them find the program, the degree, the pathway that really makes their life livable and mobile um, in, in the way that they want it to be. So right now in Cheyenne, we're kind of getting the ripple effect of some of the other industries that are, that are touched by the more um, impacted uh, counties and so we haven't started that journey as much in terms of distressed students coming to us uh, but we are ready for that and we have programs that we are, are setting up to make sure that the students that come to us can see a solution no matter who they are whether they need a high school credential or they need a workforce certificate or degree or they're really ready to change gears completely and go into something that's not tied to energy industry. So that's that's what we're trying to do. Dave, your, um, your role as to now having input in this changing economy, what are you telling people like Dr. Fries or, or, or others um, relative to the, the role that community colleges are playing in Wyoming? I, you know, like you said, Craig, I think the enrollment will go up. Um, I think people look for opportunities like that. I think uh, the federal government will come with part of those training efforts. but. People need to retool. I mean, if they were driving a haul truck, you know, last year they may need to to weld or do some diesel mechanics or electrical this next over the upcoming. And the the thing about that, like I said, is mobility. You know, if you have the training, you have the degree, you can work in Wyoming, where I think there's going to be steady jobs for years to come. But you can go to Alaska or California or Nevada. You know, as these cycles come up in mining and oil and gas, um, you're going to have to move, but you'll have those skills to move. Anecdotally, I mean, you've experienced layoffs now, certainly in the community. Mm -hmm. Do you see people wondering about their education and, and coming back to school, perhaps in a non-traditional as a non-traditional student? I think you'll see the majority of those students coming to Sheridan and Gillette College will be non-traditional. You have the stuff where they'll take that opportunity or be forced to take that opportunity. The ones that have that foresight will go to go back to school. Let's talk about the future, of <coughs> Complete College Wyoming. Um, as you said at the at the top lots to do. Mm -hmm. what, what's highest on the priority list, Jackie? So I think one of our big priorities for this coming year is really to work more with our K-12 partners. Uh, we've had, we have people from the Department of Ed on our committee. We work with principals and, and superintendents, but we really want to partner more with the faculty. Uh, so we're going to host a, a, a convening this fall where we work with math and English faculty from the high schools and they'll work with their partners at the community colleges and the university to really talk about what does it mean to be a prepared student and how do we easily make that transli transition so it's seamless so that students are not struggling from one level to the next. Simple things like encouraging students to take math their final year in high school can make a world of difference for how prepared they are when they enter the college environment. So we're going to work hard on that. Um, some of the other things I think we need to do, we need to continue to assess, now that we have some benchmarks for our data, we need to assess how well we're doing activities that lead to not only student engagement and success, but rapidly moving through the system so that they complete in a timely manner and spend as little money as they, they possibly can on their education and so they're prepared to move out into the workforce or into the, ne the next level of education. So there's a lot we still have to do, a lot we still need to talk about and share with our partners. Judy, LCCC has always been in a unique position in my eyes, being so close to our state's four-year univers four uh, university. Um, the future um, of, of, of Laramie County Community College with 
the complete college Wyoming movement. Does, is it different for you than everyone else in Wyoming, or are the goals all the same? I, I think the goals are probably fairly similar everywhere we are, but you know, all of the community colleges in Wyoming are around the perimeter of the, the state, and so they all have some four-year institutions that are closer and more distant. We, we happen to be, have the good fortune, uh, fortune of having UW in our backyard, or we're in theirs, I guess, but, um, <laughs> but our we students, are in some regard, right? yes, <laughs> our students have tremendous opportunity to use more of the state's um, gifts, tr truly, the Hathaway program. Our students can go there and, and probably use that to more effect than maybe students at other institutions. That, that don't have UW right there. So our students have a lot of choice and we have been aggressive with seeking articulation agreements with them and, and feel like we've got clear pathways that our students can see from the moment they enter at LCCC through to their bachelor's degree at UW or another institution too. But, but uh, UW is a big piece of, of what we look to for, for our student opportunities. We've heard that word pathways now twice in our discussion. Right, right. Let's, um, let's, let's, let's talk about that in a more uh, de defined role. There are pathways programs both at Western and at LCCC. Um, you're up first, Jackie. Okay. So, you know, the pathways is an important part of the Complete College America agenda. They have four main hallmarks and pathways is certainly one of them. But what that just really means is structuring that educational environment so that students understand what the rules are, how they move through the system, and how they can get that education that they want in a system and, and timely manner. So for Western, what the pathways really mean is a comprehensive relook at everything that we do. And we started with looking at our advising and our intake. So we did a lot to change. We have now a one-stop where all of the services as they enter are, are one area, one easily accessible information source, if you will, and students can understand education because we're dealing with a lot of first generation college students and they may or may not even understand what a FAFSA is. So we want to be able to provide good information. And then we want seamless transition to advising. And ours is also intrusive, although we use the word informed. Our faculty like that word better. <laughs> um, but informed advising means students are required to visit with their advisor. Students don't always opt for the right decisions if you let them choose. Um, they wander in the wilderness entirely too much, and so we need to help them. And they can still make decisions that they want, but they need to be informed decisions. And so that's been an important part. The other thing that we have really focused on and we joined the, we applied and were accepted to the American Association of Community Colleges Pathways Project. And within that Pathways Project, we're working on this whole picture, including our academic programs. And so we restructured our gen ed and we're revamping every program so that it's very systematic and that a student sets up their academic plan when they come in and it's established for the two years and even the next two years then if they go to the University of Wyoming or some other school and, and they can easily see what they need to do and what they need to take. But probably the most exciting thing about that is they can see what happens if they make a bad decision. If they need, for example, developmental math and they choose to drop that class, their path will tell them what that means. That you may be adding a whole year to your college experience because you dropped this class. Again, the student can choose, but at least they know what those decisions what mean. Be. Yeah. Judy, is it different, your Pathways implementation at LCCC? Actually, it's, it's quite similar, mm -hmm. and we're moving to a one-stop model as well with a <clears> new <throat> building that we have um, been under construction. And so, uh, but we're probably further than others on more of the intrusive advising. We went um, into that completely and went, moved away from the faculty-led advising and into professional advising. Um, as our full model. And so uh, every student comes in and, and has an advisor that sticks with them to graduation. And that consistency and that kind of cons concierge model of whatever you need, I'll connect you with, is, is what we're working with. And I know that that's, that's also what Western is doing. And it's, it's kind of wrapping services around students instead of putting them out there and hoping they take advantage of some. And so that's, that's really the model, and it, it so far is working. We um, have some, some early data from the, the spring semester here that shows that we have dropped a, a dramatic drop in our students who are on academic probation and suspension. And so that's a good indicator that students are not able to really fall off the tracks as much as maybe they were before. Dave, I want to ask you this question. I'll give sure. everyone an opportunity to respond as non-traditional students maybe migrating back to community college. 
does that make the goals of the five percent more per year tougher than a traditional student just coming out of high school? Do you do you um, do you have uh, input into those folks or in, in in encouraging them as they as they may be coming back to something that might be not familiar? I think it's one of those when you're you know, physically paying for that and you've got a family and you've got experience the the non-traditionals and I was a non-traditional a lot of years ago when you just you study harder you were paying for it you knew what it meant to have an education I think you'll see higher completion rates from the non-traditionals because they get it they absolutely get it interesting so not maybe maybe lower completion rates maybe higher mm -hmm. is that th what the statistics show yeah, I think it does generally and they're more focused students for sure they, they come in with a goal and they just need to be guided in the same way that a traditional age student would. But I think the real benefit of community colleges is just that we're flexible enough to deal with all mm -hmm. these groups. And in fact, we've been really intentional, all of us as a state, to make sure that we don't forget the part-time students because many of our students don't go to school full-time. But if they stay on track and they keep working away, they're going to be a graduation statistic too. It's just going to be at a different point, but we know what that point is. But the goal now is really, instead of just people enrolling in classes at a community college, it's enrolling to have a purpose. Absolutely. That's absolutely what you focus on. Judy, your thoughts about the non-traditional students returning perhaps to LCCC? Non-traditional students are truly your pace setters on your campus, and, uh, and so they're serious. and want to get a return on their investment of both time and money. Mm -hmm. And so they appreciate the more clarity we can provide for them, the more support, and the easier it is to find that support, the better it is for them. So um, they're, they're a wonderful influence on our campuses, and, and we welcome them. Final thoughts then about this summer's upcoming work. What's, what's next in the short term for Complete College Wyoming? In the short term, I think we, we've decided that some of our informational tools need to be enhanced. Uh, we started with a website that was more informational about what CCW really is, and we've matured. And so we need our website needs to reflect that. We need to do some planning so we know what this fall event will look like. And then we need to just be very focused on sharing the message out to folks and letting people know where the successes have been with some of these initiatives. Remediation, for example, is a scary thing for people. We need to be telling them that it doesn't have to be and that there is success, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And so we'll be doing more of that as the year goes on. And our viewers now are seeing the uh, website address for Complete College Wyoming. And as we wrap up today, any, any final thoughts? Um, let's start with you, with you, Dave. I think um, it's a commitment. I mean, we're certainly committed to being in Wyoming and being a community partner. Um, we believe this uh, will economic downturn will come to a, a plateau at the bottom. Uh, we believe we're going to be here for lots of years. Uh, the oil and gas and the coal industry, so it's important to take this time for folks to reset. If you do need to get back to school or retool, now's a good time to do it. But your message still is even for folks even considering the energy industry, a degree is helpful. A degree is going to, it's going to be what separates you from everybody else trying to get in. Absolutely. Judy. I'd say we're, we're going to remain focused on the, the completion goals that we have and on helping students uh, make the most of their time with us. I think that's, that focus will not go away no matter what the economic uh, world mm -hmm. is like and, and uh, that just helps us do our job better and know where we need to spend our resources too. Well, we'll look forward to monitoring the progress of thank Complete you. College Wyoming. Thank Dr. You. Jackie Fries, thank you so much. Judy Hay and Dave Traversal, thank you so much for joining us on Morning Chronicle. Thank you. Thanks.